Today's video is brought to you by Tuner Nerd and their Knock Monitor Pro. Uh, this video is a little bit of a continuation of the video I did about a week ago. Um, I'll put a link uh, down below for that, um, where we tried out the Knock Monitor Pro on a Turbo Honda. And in today's video, we are going to be testing a bone stock uh, 4.8 Silverado um, with uh, basically testing uh, the Knock Monitor. Pro versus the factory knock sensors and the factory calibration and see uh, how close they are. Um, this truck is actually my pile of garbage. Um, it has 235,000 miles on it. It's probably had about two oil changes. Um, probably the same spark plugs from uh, when it came off the showroom floor. And um, basically, uh, I don't really mind too much to uh, intentionally make it knock and try and pick up some noise and uh, compare you know the factory calibration versus what we find with the knock monitor pro uh, since this video is a continuation of the last video um, same thing applies here if you like this video uh, comment below that you're interested in winning one and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already um, you can have an opportunity to win your own uh, knock monitor pro free of charge uh, and they will be shipping anywhere in the world, so don't be discouraged if you're in another country. And um, if you uh, go to the other video and uh, do the same thing there, then uh, you probably increase your chances of winning. Um, I'm going to let Tuner Nerd pick the winner. All right, so this looks like a whole bunch of stuff, maybe a little intimidating, but it's not so bad. So basically, we got headphones so we can listen to the knock, obviously. Uh, we have the Knock Monitor Pro unit itself. Um, which actually has a diagram on the back, it's pretty convenient. Um, this is just an audio cable for the headphones, this is just a charger for the headphones. Um, this is just a little like a uh, USB hub, uh, so you can plug a whole bunch of things in in case the laptop doesn't have enough. Um, and then here's our main harness, uh, here's our knock sensor. Uh, knock sensor plugs in, uh, basically we're just going to have uh, just uh, like a chassis ground um, and then we're going to have power wires for uh, the unit and a RPM signal which I generally will pull from a fuel injector. Um, so now I'm just going to basically find a spot on the block for the knock sensor and um, doing this up on the lift and uh, once I get this in the car then we'll back it up throw it on the dyno and Roll from there. Alright, I just finished filming this video and uh, everything went completely different than I was expecting. So definitely, uh, I apologize it's a little long, but uh, just hang out to the end and when you see the actual difference between the two, um, it's, it kind of blew me away. Alright, a couple things to know. Um, this truck's been sitting undriven for every bit of three years. Um, needed a new gas tank, fuel filter, fuel lines, regulator like the works. Um, after replacing all that, um, the injectors acted a little bit goofy. Had to run a couple tanks of gas through it to get them to clear out. So it, it's possible uh, we might have some issues there. Um, other than that, it has the, uh, the finest 87 octane that Safeway has to offer since it's the closest gas station to here. Um, so it's probably knocking just sitting here at idle. Um, so kind of worst case scenario there, which is kind of perfect for what we're trying to do. Um, calibration in this truck, as of right now, is 100% factory untouched. Um, so the plan, I'm going to make a run just as is, 
Um, these things run really lean from the factory, so I don't mind having it knock a little bit, but I don't want to blow it up on purpose. Uh, so we're going to throw some fuel at it, get the fueling straight, and then after that we'll start playing around with timing and knock and uh, basically the whole purpose of this video. Alright, I haven't decided if this is a good thing or a bad thing yet, but um, trying to run the truck 100% factory calibration, no changes, no nothing. Um, it just was knock retarding like crazy. It was pulling seven, eight degrees out of it. Um, total turd. Uh, I mean, it's going to be a turd anyway, but like really big turd. Um, so I think I'm going to go backwards from what I was in originally anticipating on this. Um, we're just going to throw timing at it, monitor the knock um, until it either starts knocking or uh, quits making power. Um, and then maybe we'll load the factory calibration in and compare. So um, let's make some runs um, with all of the factory knock uh, retard like uh, ability disabled. Um, so it's not going to pull any timing. So our dyno is designed to handle between three and 4,000 horsepower. Um, so when we put these low 200, 250 horsepower or less cars on here, they read very low. Um, as you'll see with this one. Um, and to put it into perspective, a car that makes like 230, 240 on my old Dynajet 248, uh, usually make about 185, 180, 195 on this dyno. So uh, just expect the numbers to be a little bit lower. Uh, with that being said, I'm fully aware that this thing is a big gigantic turd. And uh, just the fact that it's willing to take so much timing uh, kind of just really shows how much of a turd it really is. The results here I would say are abnormal, so definitely don't just go plug these numbers into your car. Uh, you can see I'm sitting here with headphones on, on the dyno, multiple things, monitoring multiple different things, and I'm perfectly okay if this motor blows up, um, but uh, check out the results. I don't suspect we're going to see much of a gain here. It looks like we've tapped out. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if we start picking up a bunch of knock now or if we've got to throw more timing at it to actually get some, some big time knock. Let's we'll see what happens. So especially for the uh, trash water fuel that's in this thing, um, I'm actually pretty surprised to see uh, it's still going with timing um, and uh, how far off the factory knock sensors were in this scenario. 
Um, so we're gonna try two more degrees and try it again. All right, looks like it's about tapped out now. So throw another two degrees in it and see if we can't get it to uh, rattle a little bit. Still pretty quiet. Uh, go another two degrees. Set the camera back here in case the rods come out. It's definitely starting to get unhappy, so uh, I'll try a little bit more and see if we can't get some uh, something crazy to listen to or look at. Um, but this will hopefully be the last run. Okay, it's on the verge of blowing up there. So we're gonna stop. And um, so now I've put all of the knock uh, retard adjustability back in it. Uh, I put the factory ignition map back in it. Um, so it's basically a factory file with the exception of uh, the full throttle fueling that I changed. Um, so now we're gonna see what the factory ECU and the factory knock sensors wanna do. Um, in comparison to uh, what being able to audibly listen to it tells us.
So that's a pretty crazy difference. Um, so it actually, with the added fuel in it, it didn't pull a bunch of timing on that one. It just pulled like half a degree at very upper RPM. Uh, so now I'm going to put two degrees in it everywhere and make the same run and uh, see what the knock sensors do. All right, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, make sure you comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff for a chance to win your own Knock Monitor Pro. Um, I guess take everything that you're sort of seeing with this video with a grain of salt. Um, if I had to guess, I'd say we're picking up a bunch of false knock from the factory knock sensors. Uh, Lord only knows what's rattling and, and doing what uh, on this pile of crap truck. Um, however, it's, uh, it's pretty nice. If I didn't have the knock monitor on this, um, there's no way I would have went as high as I did with the timing. Um, obviously, there towards the end, I was trying to get it to make a bunch of noise. Um, but uh, given that the fuel was in it, I would have thought that um, this would have peaked on power in the maybe 22, maybe 24 degree range, but probably 2022. 20, um, so to see that it was going higher using the knock monitor pro, um, kind of really puts it into perspective. Um, now, the way that the audio is going through um, editing program and here onto YouTube, um, I can't necessarily hear it quite as well uh, the way that you guys are gonna be listening to it as I can directly from my laptop. Um, so that's just something else to keep in mind. But uh, either way, hope you guys uh, enjoyed and maybe learned something and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.